The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Welcome, my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. Griffin, I want to start the show, but I have to say, your eyes are looking so dope. It's, um, they're, they're, they, they really pop nowadays, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's like a, your eyes have a groove, like, yeah. if, if I may say that. My eyes are honorary members of the dog pound. <laughs> tell, do tell. How did you achieve this look? Must have um, been expensive. I went to the glasses store, and the elderly lady who was making me try on every goddamn pair of glasses in the store, mm-hmm. um, she was the proprietor, not just some old lady that was in the store. Uh, she was like, you know, your eyes kind of look like the eyes of the bassist from Journey. And I said, oh, that's funny. Um, do you mean Randy Jackson? And she says, yes, I have just the glasses for you. They're Randy Jackson's glasses. What? Oh my! Well, how did you afford that? They were extremely expensive, right? Um, but I, you know, I decided I'm 24 now, going on 25. It's time that I have good things in my life. <laughs> you earned it. Um, so I, I, uh, yeah, I joined the dog pound, and um, now I make uh, sort of inane criticisms of things, and criticisms mm-hmm. that don't make any sense nor mean anything. You make to anyone. You- you make references to working with Michael Jackson that are apropos of nothing. Yeah, and and just totally untrue, patently untrue. Uh, speaking of patently untrue, this is an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your youngest, Randy Jackson is whoop, whoop. brother, Griffin <laughs> Dog McElroy. Pound. Can we um, can we start the Halloween talk now? Halloween is today, and hello, boys and ghouls. Nope. Daddy, no, no likey. But I've been working on that like all week. No last likey. night, I feel like last night was the official Halloween party night. Um, did you guys partake? It's it's not the official party night for theaters. Oh, that's right. You have. Sunday is the new Saturday. Yeah. Sunday is the new Saturday for theaters. Uh, I was thinking we could maybe go around and everybody could say what they uh, uh, what they dressed up as. I uh, was uh, deposed head of the uh, Federal Reserve Ben Bernanke. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, I thought so. Um, I was a I was a drunk baby. <laughs> it's a good it look. A, it was a good look. It did, I didn't start out... I didn't... It's complicated, but I didn't start out that. I sort of became that. I was uh, sleep. Yeah. Travis is Morpheus. It was pretty badass. That's what he said. Yeah. I, I, everybody kept asking me justin i think ben bernanke is the current uh current head i don't think you know who this person is and then i said i think you just like his last name i said i but i addressed as him to post i said hey it's halloween live in the fantasy i feel like like there was a a governmental figure somewhere in the world with the last name skittle fingers (laughs) then you would have said that you were that person Mm mm-hmm Hey, also, something else I was thinking about last night at, while dressing as deposed Chief of the no. Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke, from an alternate future where he has been removed from his position. Why is nobody saying drama, drama, save it for Obama? Why is that not caught on? Um, that's See, that's exactly why I'm glad we have this platform. Yeah. Hey, everybody, if you could just say, drop that in a convo. I know I could tell from the roaring reaction it got on the show that it's a pretty good line. So <sighs> Wait, <laughs> hold on real quick. Drop so it? you're not saying chant this at like um, a rally. You're saying like if you're having a conversation with a friend, and there's yeah. drama. find a place to work it in. Yeah. Drama, drama, save it for Obama. Don't yeah. you think? I invented a kind of a fun Halloween party game this morning. 
and I think it only works on Halloween when you're a grown-up and you got drunk the night before at a Halloween party where everybody's wearing costumes, and it's um, it's called uh, I blanked on or at blank, <laughs> and you just <laughs> fill in you fill in the blanks with a with a verb and a thing like like last night I threw up on a dinosaur. <laughs> That's last not a night. Si- Last night, I farted on Skrillex. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, I yelled at the Black Eyed Peas. Uh, let's get to the advice. My trusty vehicular sidekick has finally started to kick the bucket. Soon, I'll be, I'll have to be do- doling out some serious dough to purchase a new, well, too new to me, vehicle. Uh, that's the only smart move, by the way. Uh, but of course, I want to get a great deal. It's been a long time since I've had to do this, and I feel a bit crusty. What rusty, are rusty. rusty? What are your best haggling tips? Dear That's from Bam, I feel crusty. Still. I feel crusty. See a doctor. <laughs> um, for, that's from finagling Phil. I have bought a car recently, um, and it is it is an intimidating world out there, guys. What'd you there, What'd you go with? What What'd you go with? A hearse. <laughs> I got tricked. I, he said it was just a long car, and, but, but it was a hearse. What are you looking? Is this an Oldsmobile long car? This is an Oldsmobile you... long car. Why is there a picture of a ghost with a no sign over him? <laughs> I bought the one. So you looking for a sedan or a hatchback or a truck or? A... We got this hearse. Got a hearse. <laughs> Ecto what's one. The, what's the brand? Oh, it's hearse. Hearse brand. Nobody knows who makes hearses. I wish I'd been there at that design meeting. Like, Phil, this is a really cool car. I don't know who you're putting in the back, though. It's like, you know, you can just have somebody back there and just chill. <laughs> it's like a portable nap room. It's like yeah, a portable nap room that I a made. A portable forever nap room. I would love to have been in that meeting because I would have said, I'm going to throw something out. Flame decals. That would mm-hmm. be cool. Cause they're I taking, know, right? Because they're taking them to hell. Um, oh. I, I think that your your best bet is to... And and this is this is tough, but go to as many different places as you can. Look at as many different cars as you can, because the the only time that you're getting into trouble with this sort of thing is is if you aren't willing to walk away. And if you get your heart set on a car and you think like this is the one for me, um, then it's going to be harder for you to negotiate because you'll be worried about losing it or worried about looking like a jerk or whatever. And remember, the worst they can say is no. Um, I bought those Randy Jackson glasses. Yesterday, it was the very first store I walked into, and it was almost the very first pair of glasses I saw. I bought them for $300. Right. I don't think I know how comparison shopping works. No. no. I'm saying, I don't think you're buying a car in this situation. You're buying the man, and by the man, I mean the salesman, that you, you have to find somebody who makes you feel like you're not getting fucked. Like he's not trying to fuck you. But Griffin, don't you understand? That is the That's how they work. That's the exact vibe that these guys work to cultivate. Like they are trying to give you that vibe. But that's now let want. me take that a step further to go and actually buy the man and start asking him questions like, What's your miles per gallon? Yeah. Do you oh, have automatic okay. windows? Do you take diesel? What are your fe- safety features? Do you know Kung Fu? <laughs> Can you protect me? Uh, I bought mine from a shady fat guy because I knew where he was coming from. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I get your, I get your style. You're not trying to pull one over on me. You are a shady fat gentleman. You're like, both blatantly sketchy and obviously like Cheetos. You love when food. I, you love food. When I, I got there, this is not a joke. When I got there, the hood of the car was open and all the tires were off of it, and there was a guy in a hat trying to charge the battery." And I'll take it. I'll ta- you know, somebody <laughs> like that, they're not trying to pull a fat. They're like, listen, you get what you get, you know? Yeah. It is what it is. Is, uh, is there some kind of event that you could stage that would strengthen your bargaining position? Uh, like a hostage crisis? Well, I'm saying like a mugging or like a hostage crisis. You want, to become, you want to become the community darling. Yeah. No one would rip off Little Rick. <laughs> famed, famed mugging victim, Lil Rick. Lil Rick, like, hurt as you. you're walking across the street to the lot, you like save a kid from getting hit by a car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you become I- like the light on the on the hill for your whole city. Yeah. I mean, who's gonna rip that guy off? <laughs> no, An asshole. That's nobody's who. gonna rip Lil Rick off. He's the light that got us through the depression. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is there a way that we can get this guy a car for free? Yeah, that's easy. Well, Kickstarter. That's yeah. Well, <laughs> Wait. Oh, what? <laughs> Just go on Kickstarter.com and say, "Hey, help me buy a car," and then the payoff is, "I'll give you rides, whatever you want, free that's, rides." That's great. If you donate a hundred bucks, I will take you to the airport. Don't even worry about it. It's like a limited number of rides. Like it, what for a hundred dollars at some point in your life, you're gonna need a ride, and maybe that person is not gonna drive there, but they'll call someone they know or maybe get you a taxi. Yeah. Are you planning on flying into Boise, Idaho anytime soon? If so, I will pick you up. I will pick you no up. No questions asked. I have a Toyota Corolla now, or I will. Give me a Hondo. <laughs> With your help, we can all own this car. By which I mean me. I like and, that. Or maybe you're feeling really generous. I'll name it after you. Mm-hmm. Donate 500 car. or more. I will name the car after you. There are five right. of this gift. So the car <laughs> will have five names. Mm-hmm. My my car is like is like the arcade fire. <laughs> Just <laughs> I think, so many different names in there. Um, that uh, let here's my bargaining. Go early, go crazy. Just tell him, hey, I'm not gonna pay you more than seventeen dollars for this car. That's and let him Ooh. let him know that you're not coherent <laughs> that you're not what if oh what if you just said i will pay nothing for this car instead of low balling just no balling no ball them <laughs> it's like nope my but i, I still actually, want it last time i tried to negotiate with a car guy my wife accused me of, of no balling so that was, <laughs> that was um did is you there, did you is, i've never had to i i bought a car from a, a, a credit union i've never i've never had to haggle with a man for something that's going to be as ubiquitous in my life as an automobile. Is, is it something that still really happens? I feel like in this yes. age of Yelp... You know what? I, I bought my car rebuilt, Griffin, the zombie car. Yeah, I, and I remember. And we knocked $1,000 off of it. See, and it was it was already only like $5,000. That, that must make you feel great, but I feel like that's the exception to the rule. In this age of Skype and Yelp and eBay, why can't I just eat, like internet a car? And like, not have to worry about like I can pr- comparison price comparison shop on the in- on internet. I was watching TV the other day, and Christian Slater told me about one of those places. But see that I feel like I'm being fucked by internet in that occasion, which is which is way more raw than being fucked by a man. Right. Um, uh huh. Well, Phil, here's my advice because this is what I would do: take my dad with you. Okay. Um, take Clint McElroy with you, um, and have him negotiate for you. Have him be your proxy. Can we rent our dad out for situations that where you need a dad? And you let, let me be clear: you need a dad when you're car shopping. Uh huh. Yeah, rental dad. Got to have a dad in your pocket. That's, Hold that's on, the name of the daddy. business. That's the name of the business. Dad in your pocket. Uh, <laughs> that's that's also another good. If you ask your friends and family if they know somebody who sells cars, who presumably won't flip you over and just fuck you dry just right there on the hood of the car <laughs> just like you're in a right poison music the... video <laughs> this is uncomfortable for me uh you know a good a good uh bargaining technique if you're uncomfortable with the whole idea like myself um get tell them that your financier whoever they may be the the bank or the the whatever won't give you as much as they're asking that's a good one because that because then you decide how much you want to pay for it and say, listen, the most they'll, they're willing to give me is this. Can we work this out? Can we can we do this price? I like that. What about just giving them the old silent treatment? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Dave, there's been a guy standing out in the lot staring at that Subaru for the past two days. He's got snow and a sparrow on his shoulder. I, I've tried to talk to him like eight times. He just looks at me like a like some sort of weird statue from Labyrinth. I think we should cut him a deal. Can we just give him that car for free? <laughs> Can we I just give him the car? I hate that Subaru. <laughs> I've never liked it being here. Drive it off the lot. Get it off the lot, Dave. Guys, last hey. night, last night, I bit a child. <laughs> I have one employee, a young woman, who is kind of a counterculture hippie type. She's a great, she's a great employee, but on warm days, uh, she can have a pretty intense body odor. Uh. She is not dirty, so I assume she either uses no deodorant or some bullshit crystal thing. <laughs> I feel like it needs to be addressed, but I'm not sure how to raise the issue without making her feel like she's in trouble or like she's gross or like I'm an asshole. That's from willing to be an asshole. 
if you want a practical solution, you could try to get an office conversation going between the two of you about mm-hmm. everyone's favorite brand of deodorant. Yeah. That, that, could, that could make for an, an, an awkward way of bringing up the issue. I use Mitchum crystals. <laughs> Who's on Mitchum? Anybody? You, you just uh, you hold them. You hold them like a foot out from your pit, and it just absorbs all this tink away. <laughs> and your bad vibes. And your bad vibes. Get them out. Uh, I think this is one of those situations where you should just say it. You're a boss. You're in a professional setting. <coughs> she's got a job. And you should just be like, hey, I'm telling you this as a boss. You stink. My employee stink ratio is 100% because you're my only employee and you stink. All the people who work at my business stink. Uh, you know, it's, it's, the thing is, if she's not, if she smells bad, I feel like in this day and age, if you smell bad, it's not because, it's because of a choice. You've decided yeah. to smell bad, which is not cool for anybody. Yeah. Well, I know they got chemicals in them, but I'm sure Tom, Tom the main makes a, a deodorant you can use. Yeah. Burt's Bees. Burt's, Just- <laughs> Burt's Bees stink wax. <laughs> Burt's B.O. I, I look at her and say, you don't want to be like Matthew McConaughey, do you? I no. don't think so. Um, Can I give I, you the actual real answer to this question? Yeah. You're not going to say a god. You're not. Thing. You're going to live no. with that. And if forever. someone comes into your business and they look at her and they say, hey, your employee smells bad, you say you tell them. Yeah. How exactly do you bring that hey, up? Hey, it <gasps> smells like a modest Yahoo concert in here. <laughs> do you have a friend or cousin or brother that's an amateur actor that could dress as a delivery man and oh, come in with a package and just be like, woo, she, you stink. And then you... <laughs> jump to the defense of this person but like she's made a choice to stink she wants to stink <laughs> i got a delivery of truth here c-o-d-u and that way you didn't bring it up but you started the dialogue i think a dialogue is it's, is essential no matter what no well um, if you have this other person is a trialogue at that point it's mm-hmm. a and one person's an actor Oh, you only have one employee, so what if you went up to her and said, hey, have you noticed how that girl in our department really smells? <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed how Ingratia smells really bad? <laughs> but my can name's th- Ingratia. Oh, that's weird. Can you uh, throw some misdirection down and wait for somebody to come into your store, which, if she smells this bad, is not going to keep happening for much longer. Um, and when that person leaves, right. be like, man, he smelled like body odor really strong. And then just constantly throughout the day, like, man, that man's body odor stink is just <laughs> it is lingering. It is sticking around. It could, that that act could go on for weeks. Like, yeah. I can't. I have to call a fucking exorcist to get that man's smell out of here. Uh, the other thing is, you, uh, Scentsy man. Uh, you call my girl Christy. She she's gonna set you up with a Scentsy burner. What a, get some get you some wafers so you get something real nice to burn to melt in there. What scent wafers are you using this week? Me? Uh, I'm using Hide the Hippie and My Dear Watson. <laughs> They're my two favorite flavors. Cloves uh, and Cinnamon and Forget She's There. Those two wafers <laughs> are the two wafers I'm using. Uh, I don't mean to... I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound sexist or set a double standard or something, but ladies, you are not allowed to smell bad. You're, you know what? It makes you're, me so uncomfortable. Everyone. Everyone, you're not allowed to smell bad. Yeah. It makes everyone uncomfortable. You're, you're right. Because then everyone knows and no one's saying anything, and that is the recipe for an awkward situation. It, but yeah. if, a, if a dude sitting next to me on a bus smells bad, I'm like, oh, man, that dude smells bad. What a bummer. But if a lady sits down, a pretty free-spirited <laughs> lady sits down <laughs> next to me and she smells bad from her armpits... I well, I don't just say oh there's a there's a lady who smells bad it's like what you messed with the whole image at that point mm-hmm. are, you're throwing are, Griffin are, off are hippies walking around thinking like they gotta get <coughs> like they want to get down with people who smell bad is that the thing like do they like that smell more like I like musk? your musk yeah your musk is so natural this is me love it you know what you're smelling me that's me that's where I am and smelling me. like. That's why I like Austin so much is because there are a lot of hippies here, but it gets to be about 108 degrees, um, and they know, they know, like, they are like, oh, I'm going to put deodorant on. Like, it's against everything I believe in, but it's 108 goddamn degrees outside. 
I can't do that to another person. But but hold on. But just to get back to this guy's question, we all agree that as a boss, he's perfectly within his rights to yeah. say something. Yeah. Hey, right? you fucking you fucking smell bad. Put you deodorant. You are my employee. I pay you, and you smell like dick. Put on deodorant, right? or I'll fire you. Okay. Give her a. Don't do it in person. Give her an employee review. And give personal hygiene a negative four. <laughs> if she asks what's it about, say, what do you think it's about, Ingratia? <laughs> you smell or, like Calamity Cafe. <laughs> Get out of here. Or what about just a fruit basket with a note on it, like, for the smelliest kid in the office? Yeah. I'm not sure that that would be... Yeah, because that's the, not very nice, but you get a fruit basket It's after. the only... <laughs> <laughs> That'll help all the hurt go away. It's going to soften the blow. Like, what? I smell... Ooh, grapes. That's yeah. good, Travis. Give the bad news a chocolate coating, saying, I'm giving you a bonus for smelling really bad. <laughs> I'm An extra $5 a week to buy deodorant, you smello. Yeah. <laughs> Promoting you to cheap smello, smello. <laughs> Get out of here. Is it possible that she does wear deodorant, but she just... this? <laughs> she's just rank... Oh god, what if it is like a serious like medical condition she has and you're like, "Hey, why don't you ever wear deodorant, hippie?" And she's like, "I actually have medical strength." Um, <laughs> I have prescription deodorant. deodorant I have sir. prescription deodorant. It's a problem I've dealt with my entire life. Thank you so much for bringing it up. I use I use Old Spice RX. <laughs> it's strong enough. I even had to I had to fork out extra for new spice. It's strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's strong enough for a man. And also strong enough for a woman with a horrible <laughs> genetic predisposition to producing sweat from their arms. I had to go out and buy the deodorant that's strong enough for a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Griffin, uh, how about you treat us to a Yahoo? Sure. Um, <clears throat> this one this one was sent in by Krista Whalen. Thank you, Krista. It's by Thank Yahoo Krista. Answers user Mr. Toucan, who asks... What if everything was shaped like a penis? <laughs> what if everything in the world was shaped like a penis? Buildings, buses, cars, shoes, fridges, etc. Would women like that? <laughs> uh, I have news for this guy. Maybe you haven't looked at his skyline recently. Everything is shaped like a penis. Mm-hmm. It's a man's world. My <laughs> penis has a tiny radio antenna coming out of the top of it. So that's... Yes. Right. I would like to... To pick um, up all the vibes the ladies... I would like to now. hear this guy's question as if he and his friends often, like, use the phrase, you know, everything shaped like a penis, and he's like, what if everything was shaped like a penis? What if literally everything? What if I was reading this question off a penis-shaped computer? That's just not the... That's not the best viewing experience, I feel oh, like. No, you, also, I how would I... you give directions to anybody? So like, take a turn left at the yeah, penis thing. I'll meet you by the cock. Like, I don't know. I don't know which one. Because everything. You're shaped no, like No, no, the veiny one. Yeah. <laughs> I think my, my favorite uh, misconception about this is that women are walking around every day wishing everything was shaped like a penis. <laughs> Man, I, wish, I sure wish I could see some penis-shaped things today. <laughs> right. If only this cell phone was shaped like a penis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this dog biscuit was shaped like a penis. Although I bet there are probably some angry women somewhere that have penis-shaped dog biscuits. Mm-hmm. You know, it would help to lend a, uh, just an extra air of whimsy to the poster for Shaft. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just think, like, wow, that's a ex- they went really with the extra mile. But this this man wasn't thinking laterally. Lateral? He wasn't thinking. <sighs> About he wasn't big, thinking across all the different possibilities. You've got to think about the big picture. We're talking about literature. We're talking about trying to read a book, but the pages are in the shapes of dicks. Right. So you get, like, two words, three words, three words, three words, and then, like, ten words, this is the balls. What if this was, like, a fucking it's Twilight like, Zone like, episode, and even the words were shaped like dicks? Exa- uh-huh. Travis, this is every... We would have <laughs> to invent a new language where the every book. character was a dick. So you're saying, like, the, it, bo- the book, too, would be... Shaped like a penis, you mean? That's what I'm saying. It would Dick be like, pages. Eat, eat, pray, love, hide it when the kids come in the room. Like, yeah. So like, basically what it is, is this is a guy who has spent his life, I don't know, killing dicks or something, or just like making fun of dicks, and then he wakes up one day and he's shaped like a dick, and everything's shaped like a dick, and the books are shaped like dicks, and the words are shaped like dicks, yeah. and like his breakfast is shaped like dicks, and he's just in the middle of town square s- spinning around the dick-shaped town square screaming, dicks! Yeah. And then a dick-shaped ghost comes up and is like, Shouldn't have killed all those dicks. What? What are you Twist. talking about? Killing dicks? 
and then it pulls out to vagina shaped scientists saying shut it down yeah <laughs> that's my favorite episode twist you know uh do you know that later Nimoy directed that episode? A lot, a little trivia. I could tell saying. it had a lot of his signature uh, uh, signature dicks. A lot of signature dicks. <laughs> a lot of his signature dicks in it. <laughs> Can yeah. I a dick shaped lens on a dick shaped TV? Is that what we're doing? Is that a dick shaped filter? Mm-hmm. I could really tell. Put it on channel Dick Dick because the numbers are dicks too, people. <laughs> oh God! Um, I think that this man's main point is um, is fallacious and. That is that uh, women would like it because I think that after a while, it wouldn't be like if every letter in the alphabet looked like a dick, then when I got a special woman in the bedroom and showed her my treasure, she'd be like, yep. <laughs> like, so <laughs> what if everything was dick shaped except dicks? Yeah. And your dick was shaped like a sitar, maybe, or a, <laughs> another. Sitar's kind of well, like you could dicks choose. a little bit. What if it was like you could choose it? Like, you know, maybe you want it to look like, you know, a clownfish. I don't know. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, wait, are they not supposed to look like clownfish? <laughs> I have to go to the doctors. My, All the doctors uh, now. Doctor, doctor, my, uh, my treasure looks like Nemo, and <laughs> it's not supposed to. Can you, um... Use all your dick tools that are all shaped like dicks. Get it from your dick-shaped bag. <laughs> Get me the nine sixteenth dick, nurse. Yeah. <laughs> God, surgery Give would be me. awful, wouldn't it? Give me that super no, sharp dick. No, the Phillips dick. head dick. It was <laughs> Phillips head dick. This is a flathead dick. Like Dick Tracy. <laughs> what? Gum shoes. All the Dick Tracy villains would be dick-shaped. Mm-hmm. Dighead. That's why. This is my my rose gallery. Dighead. Penis face. <laughs> Rod pants. Like <laughs> this is and mumbles. Mumbles. This is. Um, I hope that this is the first episode our grandmother listens. To. <laughs> yeah. I heard what you said. I heard those things. Don't I heard those things about the dick, the dick world. Thank- Thanksgiving is ruined, boys. That's my favorite series of uh, fantasy novels. But Dick World, yeah, they, uh, yeah, I, I really liked the most recent one. I don't have a punchline, <laughs> <laughs> which is a great sign that I need to move on to the next question. Um, yeah. one of my best friends moved back to town in order to switch colleges, and he has been looking for a job ever since. I recently got him an interview at the store I work at, and he landed the job. It's just a crappy retail job. When I told my girlfriend this, she voiced her concern that interacting with my friend in a work environment may adversely affect our relationship. Now I feel like I just sabotaged my friendship. Should I not worry about it, or should I tell my boss my friend has a drug problem before he stops working? (laughs) Help, brothers. That's friend of the financially flustered in Florida. Does your friend actually have a drug problem? Yeah, then it's just full disclosure. Yeah, I mean... Do we need to have a talk? I... (sighs) I, I think it's fun. Yeah. Personally, I mean, I've had friends work at most every job that I've I've had and uh I always I I it's nice to have somebody else you can chat about work with outside of the the workplace. I I don't think it's damaging at all really. The only time that it ever affected me adversely is when I worked at Best Buy and I was, you know, I was trying to get promoted. I was trying to get that cheddar and I was uh taking it far too seriously. And I worked with uh, my dear, dear friend, Michael Bradbury, who is kind of a goofball. Yeah. And he's people insane. would constantly... Yeah, he is. He's a cat bird. And people would often... Uh, my bosses would be like, hey, where's Bradbury? He's three and a half hours late or whatever. And I'd be like, I don't know. And like, he's your friend. You, then then it was kind of a bummer. You but, wouldn't throw him under the bus for corporate no. pain? Fuck no. Not for Best Buy. He's my BFF. <laughs> uh... I've gotten many of many a friend hired at a um, the institution I work with. There is always the 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 danger. I mean, I think that's the bigger worry than. I think that's a bigger worry than, um, you know, your friendship going to pot is. Your boss, you know, the first time they fuck up, your boss coming to you and saying, "Hey, hey your so your friend is working out really bad." I don't like how <laughs> yeah. they stock anything. Your friend's body odor is boombastic. <laughs> Can you talk to... Oh, my I God. I your dick-shaped I, friend. I got the answer, guys. The guy needs to hire someone else. 
he needs to hire a second employee and then fire them for being rude and commenting on her body odor. <gasps> Do you have a friend or cousin that's an amateur actor? Do you have a Wait, friend? Why do they have? Do you just have? It has to be just an outspoken. Can you an outspoken person? Like can if you, you can hire, get Jack Hay to come. Can you hire please. Star Jones for a week? Can you get, um, and if your friend is Star Jones, then I, I wouldn't worry too much about getting them hired because she's got enough charisma to to light up a room. Sure, she's gonna get the gig on her own, and there's not gonna be any problems there. I've worked with my brother for four years. And, yeah, um, that's could, well, we do it remotely, but still, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's brought us together. Um, I work with a lot of friends. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think it's an inherent problem. I think it. I, I'm trying to see what the problem would be if you don't care about your job. If you care about your job, but you describe it as a crappy retail job, like what are you gonna lose? Mm-hmm. You know, as long as you keep your head clear and you're like, "This is my best friend." I'm, I, I'm just happy to get to like hang out with him at work. Also. If it's a crappy retail job and you have a new guy in there who's your buddy, then you have two people to plan Ocean's Eleven esque heists with. <gasps> yeah, because yeah, that's the only reason people have retail jobs anymore, right? Is just is to just steal. to steal, just to, to steal, steal. Yeah. hand over fist. Yeah, I got fired for stealing at Blockbuster. Oh, please, please tell this story. What? Tell, uh, you gotta okay, tell so, everyone what you stole. So I. Things got really rugged towards the last few months of my tenure at, at Blockbuster. And you know how you can sell, um, you know, you, you, you know, people have late fees and you can put it on your computer and, and dismiss them. But you can do that with like, you could sell things to your account, right? So like if they didn't return the movie, you could sell the movie to their account and then it shows up like a late fee basically and you can clear the late fee and you can steal things that way. And and the the special edition of Fight Club came out and I sold it to my account and then I deleted my late fees uh, and as it turned out that copy was the um, the copy that I sold to my account was the boss's copy that he had reserved to buy himself so what I had done was I had stolen my boss's copy of Fight Club now I <laughs> tell this story Not to talk about my own failings as a human being, because I think we've all got dark things in our past. Sure. I tell this story to demonstrate how little he really understood the concepts being espoused in Fight Club. (laughs) (laughs) He should have celebrated. I feel like a true fan (laughs) would have (laughs) really enjoyed what I was trying to do. Can Can I ask a question? Please, yeah. It, this whole scenario is very clever. Um, why didn't you just stick Fight Club down your pants and leave the store? Well, A, okay, A, uh, cameras. Okay. B, uh, I'm a husky guy. I don't have a lot of room in there. I see, and that's I think, first no, degree no, no. stealing. I think that the thing is, that's first your... degree stealing, Griffin. Any Tom, Dick, or Harry can do that. Yeah. This I, was Ocean's Eleven style stealing, and I like it. Now, should I have sold it to a, <clears throat> an account that did not explicitly have my name on it? Of Maybe. Course. Maybe. Left quite a paper trail there, McElroy. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight and all that. Well, and you would have gotten away with it, too. Well, no, if I'd had a best friend working there, they could have helped me plot through the details. Mm-hmm. They could have said, like, hey, that belongs to Philip, and he does not really he's, understand the movie. He is your okay, employer. So- um, you should remove the sticker that says this is stolen from the from the cassette tape. So, first right. day of your friend working at this job, pull him into the back room and be like, listen, I hired you for one reason and one reason only. I got you this job so you could help me steal some movies and stuff. You're We're taking on this the inside. bath and body works apart. <laughs> piece I by got, piece. I brought, I brought you here for one reason and one reason only. So you can watch for the boss while I huff off the helium tank. <laughs> That is another thing I used to do at Blockbuster. <laughs> that that is that is I do not have a good defense for. I I, <laughs> I thought that you. I was the watch guard. I should point out my friend Jimmy would is the one who would get high and black out just in a big pile of amores. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I always thought that the film that you acquired, which was your downfall, was Showgirls. I always thought that was the case. No, it's Fight Club, which makes the irony. I mean, I I feel like if I walked out with 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 Showgirls, I would have been embarrassed. But Fight Club, 
I feel like what would Tyler Durden do? <laughs> That's yeah. you know yeah. that was it. And by the way, I, I apparently bought into that mythos a little bit too much as a young man. I think we all did mm-hmm. as young men. I remember watching that film, uh, and then I went and I got in a shower and I just turned the heat up as hot as it could go. Like, yeah, the pain is real. Like, it's not real. <laughs> it's it, it is. I, I mean, it is that real. Movie. It just hurts. I watched that movie and then I got fired from my job at the dog kennel for stealing dogs. Yeah. <laughs> No. Or you just put them down your pants, tough guy. Mm-hmm. You got fired from the dog kennel because you didn't want to clean I didn't want to squeeze butts. You didn't want to clean out dog buttholes. Like, I, I refuse to squeeze buttholes. I don't, I don't right. think that's a revolutionary concept. I thought I was taking a fucking stand yeah. being like, no, I will not squeeze that dog's butthole. This is like dog equal rights. Yeah. I wouldn't want someone squeezing my butthole. Do it to others. Hey, there you go. Say, uh, Ingratia, can you come into my office? I think you may need to go have your anal gland professionally squeezed because oh, you are, you do smell very bad. I believe something on you needs to be expressed. <laughs> don't uh, don't do that. Don't do that. That don't won't that. work either. I'm pretty sure if you say that sentence to a woman, you go to jail. Um, hey, there's this girl I like at school, and before she goes to her class, we usually hug. The problem is that when we hug, I usually have an increased amount of blood flow to my nether region. I am worried that she will feel it while we're hugging and end up thinking that I am perverted, but I can't really control it. Is there a way to stop my mini-me from rising to the occasion as from concern in California? I wish we got more questions like that. I, I love this honesty. I can't. There were more ways to say this man had an erection <laughs> without saying that he had an erection that made me so uncomfortable than I could count. In this well, <laughs> I. Uh, why are you hugging? <laughs> hey, what's but that's insane? the thing I can't get away from. Like you're sitting there, and it's before school, and she has to go to class, so you hug goodbye. Well, it's every morning. This out. <laughs> why are you hugging, Travis? That's the most goddamn beautiful like thing I've ever heard, and I don't want to crush it because I don't. Is he an eighty year old man pretending to be a kid in school? Like. That's a weird thing to do if it's just, like, your friend. Is she, like, your lady? Are you guys... You're making it sound like 8 o'clock. It's hug time. He says they usually hug. So, like, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. He doesn't force her to do it if she's uncomfortable. Yeah. Travis. If this is a thing that has happened before, you pop in an instant chubby (laughs) in this embrace, an instant embrace chubby, uh, and she keeps hugging you... Mm? Mm? Maybe your boner knows something she doesn't. <laughs> or you don't. Somebody. Your boner is the only one thinking through this situation. I think it's time to show her the clownfish. <laughs> Give her the old sitar. Yeah. Give her the sitar sighting. <laughs> she deserves it. Um, <laughs> I. You know what? Boners are beautiful, and that's a way of life, especially when you're in school. Just get the boner. I wish I could still get a boner. Maybe that. <laughs> not, <laughs> not since just be not enjoying since, it instead not, of rubbing it in people's faces. Not since the fire has Justin enjoyed that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't get a boner anymore. Like the lights. Maybe, up. maybe you just go for it, and next time you do it, just hug her real close. Here's the problem. Oh. Boy, you like that. That's good. That's not at all like sexual harassment. (laughs) Nope. Um, You get boners when you're in high school. They just happen. They 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 apparate, like like Harry Potter. Yeah. You get assigned boners like you do a locker combination. Yeah. (laughs) I do enjoy though that uh, we. I. I, I, Why do we have classes in 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 algebra two, and trigonometry when? Hiding boners is not on the menu, and it should be. How to handle your boner? Um, did you not? It was an elective for me, but I, I mean, I took. I it. wasn't on that track, no. no. I don't know. I, I had took, a home um, ec instead. I had cooking. I took hiding the boner uh, AP, so I got college credit for it. That's nice. nice. That's nice. Um, I took how to cook with your boner. Um, <laughs> I just combined the two. Yeah. Oh, it that's was a good. special track I created. Could double credit. Here's the deal. Um, I think that what I said before, I'm sticking with. I think it's time for you to make a move. Either poop or get off the pot. Yeah. 
and tell this girl you're interested in her. Start using those that, boners for good. Here's the thing, good. Travis. He doesn't necessarily have to be interested in her to get a boner. I got a boner. But he says there's this girl I like at school. He likes her. Yeah. I got um, I got boners every day in Spanish class in high school. And it wasn't because, like, my I had a busty teacher. But, like, apropos of nothing? Just apropos. I, the only thing I can think is that it's a romance language. And, uh-huh. and that fact in and of itself is enough to... Stiffen, but th- stiffen. I I say if he likes this girl, if he's hugging her and getting the bone, then he needs to be like, hey, let's go see a movie. Travis, or, he could he could he could be ha- he could have a binder resting on his lap and get a boner. Like I don't, it has nothing to do with him liking this girl. He likes having a, a warm, soft surface to press up against. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. But he needs is one of those microwavable bean bags. <laughs> He needs, he needs. He needs to desensitize himself. Yeah, he needs a a sumo chair that he can really <laughs> explore. He needs to explore his body on a sumo chair. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Yeah. Can I say Yahoo me? No. This one was sent in by Lisa Holifield or Holifield. I haven't decided yet. It's by Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> time, by Yahoo. The time is coming up. The time is fast approaching. You need to make that decision. <laughs> it's by Yahoo Answers user loser who asks. What insults have you called your pet? <laughs> <laughs> My uncle just called his kitten a dumb bitch whore. <laughs> How have you or your loved ones insulted your pets? I love animals. I'm not mean to pets. I just think it's funny calling them names behind their backs when gossiping. Wait, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Gossiping about the pets? Um, hey, have you have you noticed how fat Whiskers has been getting? Look at how chubby Whiskers smells like he has bo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's gonna tell him? Are you using I, crystals, Whiskers? I hear <laughs> Professor Mittens will go down on any cat with just a little bit of nip. Yep, all it takes. Hey, 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 everybody! If you want to gossip to your cat or gossip about your pets, just do it to their goddamn faces. Yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. stupid. Pringles. No, no, Pringles, Pringles, you are a slut. <laughs> You're a slut, Pringles. <laughs> oh, God. Nobody likes you, Rufy. Rufy? Yeah. Rufio? It's short for Rufio. Okay. Um, hey, Lord Barkington, uh, mayor of Puppy Shire, come over here real quick. <laughs> um, You're adopted. Ooh. Oh, shit. Not that there's anything wrong with being adopted. And, and no, they... isn't isn't every dog adopted? Well, some are birth dogs. <laughs> hey, Lord Edward Bark, get over here! You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Why don't you just name your cat Fartface? <laughs> they don't know. They'll answer to anything. They don't care. I I wish I lived a life um, free of fear that was conducive to me calling other people's pets names <laughs> oh my you know what i mean like if i could just go to justin's house and then go right like hey hey it's good to see you oh yeah i know i haven't seen you in so long what's up you fat slut <laughs> um, here's here's the catch about about gossiping about your pets first off that's something a crazy person does yeah. more importantly though what burn are you gonna lay on your cat mm-hmm. that is equal to scooping their poop out <laughs> of the yeah. like oh yeah pretty good one pretty good one Justin did you want to go scoop some of my feces out of sand because that's what you're doing this afternoon me me I'm going to lay on this chair and shed so what I do is I, I got I routinely withhold food from my cat. Not forever, Holy just for like shit. a half hour. Just for like a half hour, an hour when I know she's really hungry. And then I tell her that I don't want to feed her because she's getting fat. Okay. okay. Um, and then eventually I do feed her. But I do it saying, all right, if you want to get fat. Um, <laughs> she have a weird relationship, huh? Well, I don't want the cat to like me. I don't like the cat. It's, it's Teresa's cat. I you don't, don't want the cat to cat. like you. You want the cat to be the greatest ballerina in history. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, she's got the skills. She's got the talent. She just needs the drive. And that's what I'm here for. Huh? Your apartment sounds like Guantanamo Bay for cats. 
She may not thank you someday, but the world will thank you. <laughs> For giving the I also greatest cat ballerina. I am routinely also training my cat to make uh, hilarious cat videos through the internet. I, it's basically like a boot camp for that. Yeah. Can the cat upload them? Yeah. You guys know Maru? If she wants to get fed, she will. You guys know Maru? Maru was beaten to sleep every night as a, ba- as a tiny cat, as a child. Child mm-hmm. cat. It's a cat child. Uh, oh, you yeah, know what else oh, yeah. I hear? I hear. What? She's a real bitch. <laughs> and a real dynamo in a sack. Yeah, everyone. Here's has- here's my one problem with this, and we can make fun of this as much as we want. And the, I can never shake the feeling that maybe, just maybe, that cat or dog that I'm making fun of is a witch's familiar. Yeah. Oh, God, that's such a present problem today. Yeah. I know. What if? What if? I'm like, get out of here, you fat, lazy bitch. Yeah. And then she goes back to her witch, and I get cursed. Or what, what if she is a witch? What this if what it's I'm saying. what if it's Kathy and Jimmy, just just transformed, made feline, and you made oh fun god, of her? it's Sarah Jessica Parker, everyone duck. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, wait a second. Is she a witch? Sarah Jessica S- SJP. Yeah. SJP, Kathy and Jimmy, and uh, Bet Medler. That's the mm-hmm. that's Team Hocus Pocus. <laughs> 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 That's my new bar trivia name. We're we're Team Pocus. I actually do, I'm feeling right now like Griffin has not seen the film Hocus Pocus. I think that's what we're getting at. Um, Griffin, I need confirmation that you've seen Hocus Pocus. I've, I've seen Hocus Pocus. Um, What's the name of the cat? Uh, <laughs> Welcome to our new show, Hocus Pocus Trivia. It's called Hocus. Griffin, what's the name of the it's cat? It's called Hocus Jocus. It's a comedy <laughs> podcast about Hocus Pocus the movie. Um, I thought. And I was ready to go on this trip with you, Travis, that you were saying Sarah Jessica Parker is a literal <laughs> witch. She has literal she has literal children's bones in her house that she uses to cast spells. Listen, I'm not I'm not ready to say that. I'm saying nobody can inherently um, prove that she doesn't cast the, the, the black art. I'm gonna say that I don't not know for certain that she's not a witch. I think if you're saying looks alone, which Hollywood celebs look like witches, <laughs> it's it's uh, Laura Sarah, Flynn Boyle, Laura Flynn Boyle, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Blythe Danner. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll give you I think and Dakota Fanning. Dakota, Dakota Fanning is a witch baby. Oh, she looks like a child like witch. In reverse, right? Yeah, that's what all, all witch all witches age in reverse. And of course, Brad Pitt is a warlock because his his looks are magical. <laughs> okay, I'm saying uh, it's not just looks. I'm saying if there's a person on this planet who bakes children into pastries um, and then doesn't eat them and then does not eat them <laughs> it is Sarah Jessica Parker that's wasteful hey my wife have been together for seven years there are children starving in Africa that you could bake into things <laughs> my, my my wife and I have been together for seven years and for seven years I've been an utter disappointment on the dance floor whenever we go out I usually end up just hanging at the bar while she dances with her friends uh, she says it's not a big deal, but I would love to be able to enjoy a night out with my wife without being the awkward guy at the bar. Should I take measures to learn to dance or just embrace my role as that guy that can dance? At least two left feet, maybe more. That's the name of that question asked. Hey, Brosif, here's the thing. The only person that thinks you can't dance is you. Oh. Yeah, I think you can dance. I don't know what skills people think everyone else has when they say, like, I can't dance. I'm not a good dancer. Have you watched anyone else dance? It, the dancing used to, you used to be able to use that. Ex- I don't think people get this. When you see someone like in an old movie or something say, "I can't dance," what they mean is like I they don't, don't know. know how. To, I don't. I literally steps. haven't been trained on the steps yeah. of the cha cha and the bunny hop. Right. That everyone else. I knows. don't know the fox trot. I don't know. Today, people just look like they're cooking. If you <laughs> yeah. stand and to the rhythm, look like you're like stirring some mashed potatoes or mashing some potatoes or eating mashed potatoes like any any one of those is yeah, a good dance any move. mashed potato based move is going to help you out plugging in the instant beater. mashed potatoes plugging yeah, in right. the beater to whip up mashed potatoes <laughs> the gravy pour the gravy pour the gravy pour spice them up right spice them up right spice them up right like chunky 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 mashed potatoes add the cream add the cream uh 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 add the cream add the cream this just became a crimp and i'm so happy about uh, it the, 
can I give you the real secret? Can I give you my secret stuff? Can be all your dancing secrets. Here's you, my Jay. secret stuff. This is a true story. So last night I went to a party where I did not know many people, and I was sort of nervous. Um, and then, he, this by is, the way, if you don't know uh, Mac, any McElroys very well, I do not know many people. Is how every story of us getting <laughs> too drunk starts. Uh, so <laughs> what happened next was I got too drunk. <laughs> and then uh, I started dancing so hard that my that my wallet fell out of my pants. <laughs> so I went I went from oh I don't I'm so I'm kind of nervous to be here because I don't know any glug glug glug. <laughs> hey, where's my wallet? Courage, courage, I danced, courage. I danced yeah. so hard. Um, Listen, take take a page out of uh, middle school and high school, Travis, and learn to dance. Go to your wife, who is dancing, um, grasp her by the hips, and then just do whatever she does. Mm -hmm. Just backwards. Yeah, just shadow her. Whatever she does, you lock on, and you do that. Or you could just... The other thing you could do is um, some some men uh, take out this rote... Sorry, I got an email that was distracting. What you could do (laughs) is... uh, you could just, and this this works for some men. I can't pull it off because people expect moves from me. But some men just get out on the dance floor with their ladies, and they just sort of stand there like a maypole for their lady to dance around. You could do what our dear friend Bobby Glasser does, mm-hmm. which is get out there and just fucking pull moves like Jagger. Just sway. Just go to town. Shimmy. Shake. Just so I don't little is expected from you. It really is. Uh, most dancing, that, especially the dancing that guys do in like this sort of scenario, is basically just listening to the music really hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You look like you're really listening to it. Like, man, I'm hearing every beat of this. And, you're dancing. And maybe you got to pee a little bit, so you're kind of like shifting. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, exactly. If you That's, make really intense noises, people are just going to think you're dancing really good. Like, oh, yeah. oh fuck. Like, people, you don't even have to move your feet. Yeah. And if you get lost, this is pretty easy, actually. If you don't know the next move, you raise your hand up in the air and say, "Oh shit, this is my jam!" Yeah. And then, yeah. Most people are using. Most people used to do that. It's a stall. They're thinking <laughs> but the here's next the thing. move they're going to do. This is a common rookie mistake. Don't start singing along to the song. Yeah. That is a dead giveaway that you don't know what you're doing. Right. That is some. That is middle school hijinks. Sing don't one of like three or four words that mm-hmm. really resonate with you. You know what I mean? Yes. Boom, boom, so you'll be pow. like, like you know. on that September day, and like the whole crowd will just like raise their hands with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like if you and, listen to Alan Jackson music, and then when the music ends and the next song starts that you're not comfortable with, dip out to get another drink. Yeah, it's like who I got, got to take a break. <laughs> Man, and, uh, too hard. I, I'm saying like you're never gonna get better sitting at the bar. Don't you're sit at you're the gonna, bar. You might feel foolish the first like couple times you go out there. But no one's looking at you. No one gives two shits about what you're doing because they're all thinking about how awkward they look. I, right. I, I cut my dancing teeth at a, a bar in Huntington called Club Echo. On Saturday nights, they would have $5 pitchers of mixed drinks. Mm-hmm. And I would get so tipsy topsy turvy on Long Island iced tea. And then it wasn't up to me anymore. Like, <laughs> no, just... then you get taken over by the rhythm. Yeah. Right. Um, we'll let the rhythm move you. And once you do enough of that, then I think you can start dancing um, sans booze. Yeah. Just not when you're don't ever you don't, don't ever dance sans booze. No, and and your wife loves you. She doesn't care if you look foolish or not. And she's probably worried about how foolish she looks. So don't you're, worry about it. Dude. Hey, guy, if you're not out there, if you're not going to go out there, and you're going to lose her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to lose her, do you? Here's I think that, that guy slick so moves dancing um, for men is almost always an act of contrition. I feel like it's like I'm bringing myself to this shame level for you because I love you so much. Look at right. me move. Right. Look at my big dumb body move. <laughs> Look at my stupid, <laughs> stupid flesh. Just jiggle for you. I hate you. I uh, love you. But I love you. And then if you find a weird move that you can do, just scream like, this is the Todd. Everybody do the Todd. <laughs> there is always the risk that you are going to start a dance craze. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that fear is present. <laughs> Guys, real quick, Rachel Branson sent in this Yahoo answer. It's by Yahoo Answers user D, who wants to know, if you knew you was about to die, what would be your last meal? <clears throat> I was thinking if I ever get the death sentence, what would be my last meal? I'm wondering what other people would have. I was thinking a double, uh, an extra large double bacon cheeseburger meal, supersized from Burger King. But what to have for dessert? 
That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Why are you sad? You know what? The irony is that if you have a, a double bacon supersized chunder meal from Burger King, that will be your last meal. That will You're be as good as that anyway. A chunder blender from Burger King. <laughs> um, I prefer to go to Outback and get the chunder from Down Under. Yep. <laughs> what did you get at Burger King? A mistake. Yeah. <laughs> But that's okay. You get one last meal, and you can pick from anything. And right after that, you're going to be killed. What do you want? Some Burger King? Yeah. <laughs> can oh, you get me no. some Burger can you King? Di- can you dip down to PK and get me some <laughs> twists? The only thing I can think is that that is a, a play. You're making a play so that the governor feels so bad for you <laughs> that he decides not to kill you because you're already dead inside. Right. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. What did she ask for? She asked for burger. Okay, I'm gonna give a stay of execution here so I can talk to her. Mm-hmm. I want to find out what's up with this. She girl. asked for shitty f- fish sticks that her mom <laughs> made in an oven. Can I get some of those crown shaped chicken tenders. <laughs> <laughs> and the crown, so everybody knows I'm, and so I can sit on my electric throne. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the king of bed. <laughs> I used, to, I, used to be, I used to be the king of rape murder, and now I will be the king of heaven. <laughs> so, Do they still have those Oreo Blast things? No, they don't. Oreo Blast okay. and an execution crown. What's up, <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> Sorry, bro. What's check up? the crown. <laughs> oh, my God. Wheels and the rest of the BK Kids Club is here. <laughs> They're all here. <laughs> Welcoming me in. Welcoming me in. <laughs> Fly me to heaven, big kid. <laughs> <laughs> Dead man walking, you die with a, looking at the picture of the BK Kids Club like Susan Sarandon. The last face you see is going to be a face of love from Wheels and God. But why? Why is Wheels in heaven still still in a wheelchair? That seems cool. <laughs> Wait a minute! You mean it was an act this whole time? I wish I'd rape murdered you too, Wheels. <laughs> My one regret. Do you have any last words? Yeah, I wish I'd kill the Burger King Kids Club. <laughs> They're a bunch of fucking funny. What are you? What are you in for? <laughs> oh God! I killed the Burger King Kids Club. I wish I hadn't touched Grimace. I wish I would have saved it for the Kids Club. <laughs> oh God! Hey, hey, Burger King Kids Club. I want to hear Griffin's last question. Uh, first, uh, <laughs> first housekeeping. Um. MBMBAM.com is our website. Uh, we are hugely appreciative of. I think you say we're hugely popular. We're hugely <laughs> popular on the internet. Thank you we're to. We're real big. Uh, uh, office underscore memo. Uh, been tweeted about the show. Our buddy Chunky Mouth, Andrew Peters88, X Master BX Tobacco, Andy Hunt. Got some new people. Did you guys see any new, uh, new converts? People who had been putting it off and then finally got on board. Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson finally put down the bass and picked up a, an iPod and listened to our uh, listened to our show. So I appreciate that. Uh, Weird Viking, thank you for for tweeting about the show. Thank you to everybody who um, hadn't been listening before, who just started um, spreading the word. And for uh, those about Casey to listen, Geek, of course, we salute you. <laughs> uh, our old, our old friend Casey Green still spreading the spreading the word. So thank you to everyone. That's really the only way our show grows is is by by telling people about the show and and um, etc. Um, also want to mention real quick our buddy Bob Ball, whose dulcet tones you hear starting the show every week. He's got a new show that's a lot of fun called Pop Quizzical. You can just search for that all one word on iTunes or he's actually on. Um, uh, Twitter under that same handle, but it's a uh, it's a really short trivia show where he does a specific topic every week, and then you test yourself to see how well you can uh, how well you can answer his, his questions. It's about Night of the Living Dead this week. It's really good. I I, I really I really do it. It's it's very well produced too, which I like. Is it sounds like uh, that? Uh, wait wait uh, wait wait I need it. What is it? Wait, wait, I should know this. Wait, wait, don't do it. <laughs> wait, 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 don't do it. The show. Don't kill wheels. <laughs> don't rape murder the Burger King Kids Club. Uh, oh, and Mace in your face. And always Amy H. Spread, spreading the, the, the gospel, as it were. And congratulations to Church's wife, uh, who, who was our thousandth tweet. Girl Casey, so thank you and congratulations. I want to um, thank, uh, thank John Roderick real quick. Can I can I do that? 
Yeah, we got well, time. Uh, thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for uh, the use of our theme song. It's a departure. You can find that tune and many other amazing tunes on the album "Putting the Days to Bed." Um, yeah, yeah. You should uh, you should go you should go pick up that whole discography. Um. I, oh, if you've got a query, something in your life that you need a little help with, why don't you email us in bmbm at maximumfun.org. Email us and just say, hey, guys, I've got a short question and I need you to answer it. Maybe we will. Who knows? It's hard to say. You well, know? If you attach a dollar bill on there, yeah, slide, uh, it couldn't hurt. Slide a picture of a dollar bill in and we'll see what we can yeah. work out for you. Uh, Griffin, I think it's time for the last... Sorry, I know I knew shirt isn't up yet, but uh, it'll be up soon. I promise. Or just ask the people on Topotaco on on Tupatico on the on the internet. Say, hey guys, where's that new shirt? Hey guys, what the fuck? What the uh, fuck? Hey, everyone, we want to see your Halloween costumes this year, so make sure you tweet oh, them out. Yeah. And maybe you want to attach MBMBAM to there, and we can see them. Yeah, yeah. do that. But put that in the hashtags, so we can see them. If you go. In a my brother, my brother, and me themed Halloween costume, I will say your name on this program. Boom! There it is. There it is. Deal with it. And if you can get two friends and you can cosplay as us, all the better. I, I will lose my mind if you do. But that. don't just take um, a picture literally. of you and two friends and say oh, it's, it's us. I want to see distinguishing features. Yeah. Or anybody goes. Hey Jeffrey, if you want, I don't care. Yeah. Kai, or- if you wear a Jeffrey costume, you are not getting any trium. If you go as a horny ghost horse, mm-hmm. I will I will hug you next time I see well, you. Not if you're wearing that costume, though. Cause... <laughs> Griffin. This final uh, question was sent in by Lisa Nikolai. Thank you, Lisa. It's by Yahoo Answers user question mark who asks, <clears throat> Thanks for pooping in my car, Wendy. Thank God I had leather seats. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just back, Roy. I'm Travis and I'm all right. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad. So wear the lips. Keep your heart three stacks. Keep your heart. Hey, keep your heart three stacks. Keep your heart. Man, these girls are smart. Three stacks. These girls are smart. Play your part.